He watched every snap of the game. So he, he knows the Eagles are a threat here. And he said the Eagles have done a really good job with Jalen Hurts. And that team is going to be all we can handle. And this is where Jerry Jones' comments have merit. Good morning, NFC East. Good morning, everybody. Once again, my name is Jeff Kerr, NFL writer for CBS Sports. And oh, I'm glad you guys are kicking off your day with me and my boy, my quarterback, Tone DeShields. It's Tone Thursday. Tone, how are we feeling today, my man? I'm uh, feeling good, man. It's 7 a.m. You know, I can't, I can't imagine feeling any better, man. I, I woke up blessed by the best. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's always a good way to describe a good morning. I, I'll tell you that. Uh, didn't have my breakfast yet, but... Uh, Jerry Jones seems to feel he has a he, he at least has a big breakfast full of Jalen Hurts because I've never seen an owner give an opposing team's quarterback that much credit like Jerry Jones did on Jalen Hurts Monday night. Yeah, you know, um, Jerry is a is an interesting character. Right. And, you know, you got to think about the situation they're in right now. His quarterback is down. He's paying him 40 plus million a year. And he hasn't really gotten the return on that investment. Now, you know, Dak Prescott, I think he's, in my humble opinion, I think Dak Prescott is a top 10 quarterback in his NFL. But for some reason, he hasn't been able to be uh, the locomotive. He've always, he's always seemed to be the caboose. Shout out to my man, uh, Dan Celio. That's one of his famous metaphors. And what I mean by that is, you know, Dak, in my humble opinion, has seemed to be a product of, the pieces around him. And whenever those pieces haven't been there, you see what we see. A guy who is a bit indecisive, a guy who doesn't trust his lesser talent. You know, I told people losing Amari Cooper would be huge for Dak Prescott. And everyone thought it would just fall by the wayside. But no, Amari was his favorite target. Amari was his most trusted target, believe it or not. So Jerry is in a very precarious position. Uh, He's acting off emotion, as usual. And... You know, he understands the fact that Howie Roseman, you know, and Jeff Lurie, they're paying their quarterback one million a year and they're getting the kind of production they're getting. So it has to stick. It has to stick in his craw for sure. To run down what Jerry Jones pretty much said on Jalen Hurts. um, I I have the quote here. Hurts has really evolved and came out better than we might have thought. He also said he's impressed with his passing. He watched every snap of the game. So he, he knows the Eagles are a threat here. And he said the Eagles have done a really good job with Jalen Hurts, and that team is going to be all we can handle. And this is where Jerry Jones' comments have merit. Jalen Hurts grew up in Texas. So you know Jerry Jones has been following him. He was a five-star recruit. You know the story by now. Jerry Jones, to me, I I think he's impressed with what he's seen and the growth and the development of Jalen Hurts. And does it tie to Dak Prescott? I I think in the way it does, but I think Jerry Jones knows – this isn't the same quarterback we faced last year. This isn't the same quarterback we faced two years ago. This guy's going to be a problem for a long time. Well, I mean, yeah, right. It's to be expected. Um, that's typical what happens, right? You know, you tend to sleep on the competition, but then you start to see the growth. And just based off his statement, if you ask me, they didn't believe it could happen. And some people, I'm not sure if I'm quite there yet, but there are some people saying he rivals Dak Prescott. You know, some people saying he's he's caught him or whatever. And I'm not quite there yet. I need to see Hurts stack these days, stack these games a little bit more. Um, not to say he can't do it. And I don't want the fans to believe that I'm completely out on Jalen Hurts or down on Jalen Hurts. I'm, I'm, I'm for Jalen Hurts. I want Jalen Hurts to be the best quarterback he could possibly be. That's what I really want for Jalen Hurts. Um, I'm a fan. Uh, but, you know, a guy like Jalen Hurts, he's put in the work. He's kept his head down. He's put in the work. And you can't help but to support it. You can't help but to get behind it. Exactly. And – See, here, here's the thing. I watch some of the All-22, and I watch Fran Dunphy's All-22 uh, Fran Duffy's all with Greg Cursell. I, I love All-22 films. Don't get me wrong. I, I watch it, too. But I'm kind of getting tired of the I'm smarter than you narrative with a lot of people. And I'm not saying Fran and Greg are like this because they're not. But now you're seeing people break down their All-22, and they're saying, well, the Vikings let Jalen Hurts throw. They made Jalen Hurts beat them. Well, yeah, that's football. That's yes. the sport. So the Vikings challenged Jalen Hurts to beat them with his arm, and he did. And they went into a now-what approach. Like, we don't have to make everything 
so complex here. And that, that's what drives me nuts. And, and I don't think they were negative comments on Jalen Hurts per se, but I just don't like the tone it came out on social media. Well, the Vikings there to be him with his arm, and he did. And teams are going to change up. Yeah, teams are going to change it up. That That's natural. But you don't think Jalen knows that? You don't think the Eagles know that? I'm sure the Cowboys are going to give him a different look too. But it, this ain't last year. Jalen Hurts is going to beat you with his arm just as much as he's going to beat you with his legs. Yeah, he's processing information uh, significantly faster. Uh, you could just see it on the field. He's appears to be he he just appears to be more decisive, right? So that that narrative is hilarious to me because those people are the same people who who get on him for running. And okay, the the narrative has always been well, teams are going to load the box and force Jalen Hurts to beat them with his arm. Okay, he did that. All of a sudden, it doesn't matter as much. People love to people love to move the finish line. People love to move the goalposts, and it's okay. Those kind of people, I don't really pay too much attention to those. Those people are, those people act off emotion. Those people are wishy-washy. They're flaky. Uh, I do not buy into that narrative. You know, at the end of the day, he's an, he, uh, he, he's he's an NFL quarterback, and if I, he's not responsible for the defense the Vikings are playing, if if they came out there with the game plan, because at, at the end of the day, all these teams, all these coaches game plan. It's their job to get their team or, or prepare their team to be in the best possible position to succeed best possible position to succeed and if a team under prepares or if they prepare the wrong way sometimes it's not even effort it's just it's just not having the right game plan if a team comes in with the poor game plan how is that Jalen Hurts fault a lot of people were saying well he was he was throwing to receivers that had about five five yards minimum of space you know all that kind of stuff and I'm like that's cool and I get that that's not going to happen every week and this is only a microcosm of what's to come, if you ask me. Jalen Hurts is going to take the game to another level, and he's, this is only week two, and we've already seen this jump from week one to week two um, in terms of production. You can make an argument. We probably would have seen this in week one, but the Detroit Lions blitzed him so much he had to get out of the pocket and be evasive and make things happen, and he and he put his stats by the wayside and focused more on moving the ball and focused more on production. So that whole narrative about, well, you know, they let him do that, um, that's not his fault. At the end of the day, he had to throw that ball. People were getting on him. And I'm sorry, sorry, sorry for being long winded, Jeff, but I'm pretty sure you remember this. People got on him for not being able, being able to make the easy throws, not being able to uh, throw guys open. Every throw I've seen him make, he's he's throwing the guys in stride. He's putting it in spots that only, they're, only they can get it. That's growth to me. Yeah, what upsets me about the whole thing is, uh, you know what? No, it doesn't upset me, uh, uh, honestly. I, I, I'm just going to say this. I think people criticize Hurts the way they do, especially the analytics people, the the I'm smarter than you people. They were proven wrong by what they've seen so far about Jalen Hurts. And I think Jerry Jones, not saying he's in that category because he's never spoke bad about him, but I think Jerry Jones took a step back and said, you know what? I'm wrong. I was wrong about this guy. This guy's a pretty good quarterback. And – I'll admit I'm wrong. I know the Eagles are going to be a problem. I Because the, the Eagles are the biggest threat to the Cowboys in the division. He's not saying that about the Giants. He's not saying about that about Washington. He's saying that about Philadelphia. And for me, for Jerry Jones to, to, to make the comments that he did on 105.3 The Fan. Again, these are big-time comments from probably the one owner that everybody seems to pay attention to. I think the Eagles are put on notice because of this. And that's just not Jerry Jones and the Cowboys. That's around the league. I think Jerry Jones knows, look, the NFC East goes through Philly right now. And I still think it goes through Dallas until the Eagles beat Dallas. But I think Jerry Jones looks at it from a different mindset. Yeah, it's almost like uh, the calm the calm before the storm, right? He sees it coming. And he knows that when we face them, Dak's not going not, not to be available. They're, they, they can talk all they want about trying to force Dak back. And that's going to be a more so of a liability than the asset, if you ask me. Look, Jalen Hurts, he hasn't beat the Cowboys yet in his career. We understand that. And a lot of Cowboys fans like to throw that uh, throw that up. That's fair. Um, but you were going against a quarterback that was inexperienced, a guy that was thrown into the fire, a guy who didn't have as many pieces around him to succeed, um, a guy who was still developing. And now you see a guy who's more confident in the pocket. I was re-watching that Vikings game last night, and – the amount of patience he exercised in that pocket, the fearlessness. Uh, there was a play, I believe. I, I think I think I believe it was uh, right before halftime, where he stood in that pocket and he delivered the ball down the middle to Dallas Goddard. And I think it was Daniel. Uh, 
uh, I think it was either Daniil or Zadarius, um, you know, one of the linebackers that came in and blew him up, but he stood in the pocket and he took the hit. And that's something people criticized him for, not being able to stand in the pocket, deliver the ball down the field, in the middle of the field, and trust his receiver to make the play and just trust his arm. He stood there, stood tall, delivered the pass, and took the hit. That's a, that's the signs to me of, of growth in the quarterback. He's, he doesn't have happy feedback there anymore. And the league is being put on notice. So I fully expect things to change. I fully expect uh, the league to adjust how they're playing him. But you got to pick your poison. You know, are you going to play zone um, and leave all that space for guys like A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith? Because those guys are talented and they're smart. They know how to sit into the space of the zone. Or are you going to play man and then Jalen Hurts is going to gut you, you know, um, on the run? So you got to pick your poison. Exactly. And I don't want to get too much in Jalen Hurts today because we got tomorrow to do this too. But yeah, we do. there is a big matchup this week with Jalen Hurts and the guy he replaced, Carson Wentz, who it's been two years, Tone. But he's finally, finally opened up on his time in Philadelphia. I mean, it's unavoidable, right? You, you can't avoid it when you're playing them. And I, I still think the Monday Night Football game and Week Ten, I think it is, is going to be bigger because he's coming back to Philly. But regardless, he's facing the Eagles for the first time. And Wentz admitted it was a wild ride, but he also admitted faults of his own, saying he could have been better, a better person, a better teammate. I think we can all agree he. He could have been a better teammate. Uh, I, I don't think he showed much leadership those last couple of years in Philadelphia, especially after Nick Foles brought them to a championship and a playoff berth in those two years. I think that, that hurt him, but he said the time allowed him to grow. He doesn't seem to have issues with the Eagles front office, probably because they, they granted him his request. You know, he, won, he wanted out and they, they gave it to him. Well, I don't think they wanted to do it, but I don't think Howie Roseman's upset over it. I don't think you know, Carson Wentz is upset over it. I, I, I'd love to know his relationship with Doug Peterson, a better version of his relationship with Doug Peterson. But to me, Carson had much better things to say about the Eagles franchise than he did his former coach. That's true. That's true. He didn't really speak too much on Doug. And look, Carson, let's make it very clear. He's a good guy. He's not a bad person, right? You know, I don't want to paint the narrative that he's a bad person. But He's he has certain. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Exactly. He does. He has tendencies about him that aren't really desirable, and he's a questionable leader. Now, look, it's been some time since he's been in Philadelphia, so we're going to see what this man's made of come Sunday. This is this is a new Carson Wentz. This is a new look Carson Wentz. He's on a new team, new weapons, new scheme, and I'm gonna. I got to be honest with you. I think the Eagles win this game only because. I think Carson is going to be – the energy is going to be really high for him. It's going to be emotional for him. And it's only going to be worse when he actually comes back to Philly, if you ask me. So, I don't know. I just don't think Carson has it in him from a competitive standpoint. Uh, well, no. I don't think he has it in him from an emotional standpoint to be able to win these games because I think he's going to try too hard. He's going to press when things get a little things get a little hairy, and you're going to start to see him make mistakes, as always. I – see – when I look at this game, I think Eagles will win too. But I don't think it's going to be based on how Carson Wentz performs. I just think Carson Wentz has to play out of his mind to win this game because Washington can't tackle. They can't cover. Their linebackers are god-awful. I mean, Jalen Hurts could have a field day Sunday. And everybody's going to be like, oh, Jalen Hurts, I'll play Carson Wentz. And you'll be like, well, you got to understand how poor is Washington's defense is. I mean, they literally let a guy fall on the ground and score a touchdown last week. I mean, great, that guy was DeAndre Swift, but uh, all things considered, they're really bad on the back end. That team needs Chase Young back. Their, their front is still a problem. But overall, though, I think Carson Wentz has played good for Washington. The last I would season. say so as well. I would agree with that. Yeah. It, it, see, this is where I, I get a good pulse on social media. Commanders fans really like what they're seeing out of him. And they, they know the mistakes he makes, but – He's covering up for a lot of faults on that team. And I, you know, and I, I think the popular saying is we finally got the quarterback, but we have nothing else. Uh, I, you know, at least on the defensive side of the ball. But their offense is legit. Um, Jahan Dotson's going to be a stud in this league. He's going to be a problem for a long, long time. Terry McLaurin, we know what he is. He's paid now. He's very good. Curtis Samuel looks back. Antonio Gibson's really good. The offensive line's okay. I think the Eagles can get the win. Uh, that's going to be the, the key in this game, Tony. The Eagles have to get the Wentz and force him to make the mistakes he's 
typically makes. Yeah, I mean, you can't deny the season he's having, right? You know, 57 for 87, uh, completing about 65% of his passes. Uh, 650 yards in the air, seven uh, seven passing touchdowns, three interceptions. You know, like you said, he he makes his mistakes, but you know Carson is a guy you still have to monitor. He he still has talent. You know, he just he just had he just makes bonehead decisions. So you can't you the Eagles can't go into this game thinking that they can just sleepwalk against Carson. And I think what makes this Eagles team different than years past, they have someone in the leadership position who's a stable mind. Right. Um, Nick Foles was a stable mind, but he wasn't never really a starter, just, you know, a guy that would pinch hit. Right. But it's been a while since the Eagles had someone back there who was a stable presence and someone who demanded demanded excellence and the standard, as Jalen Hurts would say, regularly. And I don't think the Eagles come into this game um, underprepared. I don't think they come into this game. Um, being, you know, allowing the moment to get too big for them. This is a new look team anyway. They don't really have too many ties to Carson Wentz. So, yeah. See, that's the thing. And Wentz still has a lot of good friends in Philadelphia. I mean, he's played with Fletcher Cox. But you're right, though. There isn't many ties left uh, uh, in terms of the Super Bowl team. I mean, I'm trying to think who's left on that team. Brandon Graham. Kelsey, Cox, Graham. Yeah, yeah, Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, Isaac Sayamalo. There, there's not that many. I mean, Jordan Malala wasn't there. Miles Sanders wasn't there. Uh, obviously, none of the receivers – were there? It, it, it's definitely now. It's. I, I feel like after week ten, this isn't going to be as much of a story anymore because he will be back in Philly. And uh, look, I, I, I know he's going to get booed. That's just the the nature of the game. It's fine. I I don't think I could boo Carson Wentz personally, but I I, I think my mindset is I just don't care. Uh, I you know it's it was a good time for when he was there before he got hurt. I think it's more of a what if story than anything else. Yeah, it's funny. Um, the rational side of me is like, you know, he it's been it's been a couple years now. Move on. It was what it was. He was very instrumental in the Super Bowl championship for the Philadelphia Eagles. You can't deny that he was a key catalyst in that, um, helping that team secure uh, the number one seed, which allowed the Philadelphia Eagles to you know run through Philly, which forced the entire playoffs for the NFC to run through Philly. And I'm one of those people that firmly believes that if the Eagles don't have home field advantage in their playoffs, especially the way things played out, then we don't win that Super Bowl. So that's my mindset. That's the rational side of me. Now the the super fan side of me is well, this guy's soft. I don't like how he, I don't I don't like how he left the city. I don't like how he didn't fight for his job. You Thank know. You. So so you know um. That's the that's that's the duality, right? That's the duplicity. That's that's the duplicity of uh, being uh, a fan, right? An Eagles fan at that, right? You gotta you gotta be able to curb, you know, your fandom, and and then you know balance that with you know your rationale and you know and, and, and your professionalism. Yeah. Personally, I think, and again, John McMullen has a much clearer picture on this. Right. But I think the Eagles got rid of Doug Peterson for Carson, and they brought in Nick, and Carson just. He wasn't feeling it. He wasn't having it. He was ready to move on. And you're right. I, I think he had one bad year and said, well, that's a no, he did not want to be challenged by Jalen Hurts. I don't think he ever, ever liked that draft pick. And look, stuff like this happens all the time. And I get tired of hearing how he Roseman lucked into Jalen Hurts, this and that. No, he picked him. They liked him. If And remember, they had like, I think it was the hundred, the hundred third pick, I want to say, in that draft. They were not getting Jalen Hurts if they waited. They got to, they got Jalen Hurts exactly when they won together, and it worked out well for the Eagles. I, you know, I, I think Wentz's career has taken such a downturn now. I don't think it matters, but overall, it, it's just funny how he basically went to Indianapolis to try to avoid Philadelphia as much as possible, and now he's getting them twice a year. Yeah, for sure, man. It's uh, you know, look, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun Sunday. It's gonna be interesting. Their emotions are gonna be riding high. Um, I think I think the Monday night matchup, the the primetime matchup is going to be a little bit bigger because it's going to be in Philly. But, you know, again, you know, I wish nothing but the best for Carson Wentz. Um, also, we have our guy, uh, Jordan Dijani, um backstage. So, hey, listen, man, we should definitely take that break, Jeff. What do you, what do you think? Oh, 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 I definitely think so, Tone. Uh, Jordan's going to bring the heat. Uh, he is our local Washington guy for CBS. He likes – does a lot of Washington, does a lot of Titans stuff. So 
We're going to have Jordan on a couple times this year. Uh, we'll, we'll be back with Jordan right after this.